Alright, it turns out the Fiend is impossible. I'm gonna get more familiar with the enemies before we return to hard mode. Give me a new run. Dude, give me Isaac again. I'm, I'm ready here. Yeah, what the heck? Isaac's losing me money? What is this? Uh, 2000 and... What is this? The day it came out? What is, I don't know. It's kind of... I don't know. It's a bad look. I apologize. You know what? We call this the banter corridor. This is now the banter corridor. This this is your... If you're scrolling, this is a rest stop. Selling popcorn for everybody that came to read the comments. Selling hot dogs for everybody that came to read the comments. You gotta do it in a big room. <laughs> I mean, they are... It's a good card, man. Like, it's not a bad card. It just takes some time. Um, this is what the woods look like after that trip to Nichols. There were a lot of weird Canadian chain restaurants in the... In, like, the 90s. There's, I think it still exists. Um, but there was a, it was more popular back then. There was a Canadian chain restaurant called Licks. And... When you'd go to Licks, it was kind of like a Cold Stone Creamery thing. They would, you, all the workers there had to sing all the time. Like their their whole thing was like when you they took your order, they'd be like, "And hey, welcome to Licks. What will you have? We got burgers and fries, and it's not that bad." And then you'd be like, "I'll have a, a number four combo. Number four combo coming right up, and get uh, yourself some Sprite. You would get here's a cup. You know, <laughs> Mr. Peaks. Thank you for the." Subscriptions, by the way. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Hey, look at that. We got back to full HP, too. I think I, I think that's one of the reasons that maybe uh, Lix is not that popular anymore. Is that once you go to it once, after that, you're like, I don't ever want to experience that ever again. Did you live in the 70s? I didn't live in the 70s. By the time. I, I know I said it before, but thank you again, Mr. Peaks. Thank you. So softening the blow of the... <laughs> Fiscal irresponsibility from yours truly. Much appreciated. Thanks for the support. Um, in some ways, I was talking with some friends of mine about this. In some ways, I honestly feel like uh, the 90s were closer, not temporally, but the 90s were closer to the 70s culturally than to the, uh, the 2010s. Because like, my friends and I, we were talking about like, you know what, I'll just take it. I think it's fine. We were talking about our, um, like, our collegiate experience. And I really feel like when we were in college, it felt like it was modern. Because it was, it was the, you know, it was the future. Like, you know what I mean? It was the, it was the latest the Earth has ever existed. It was 2006 to 2010. Um, but when I look back and, and how, like, I'm sure college has changed now that there's, like, smartphones uh, everywhere. And not even with COVID, but, like... I mean, in college, we we got up to some irresponsible level of drunkenness. I and I, I I'm sure that we were like the first generation that like put it all on Facebook too, and and pretty much everybody you know grew out of that once they got to be like you know 22 years old. They're like, I'm gonna just take all that stuff down. But at least we weren't constantly um, w like concerned that you know a, a and I'm I'm not railing against cancel culture at all here, but like. I probably heard some, like, stupid stuff at parties that I just forgot about the way nature intended. Instead of having it, like, exist on, you know, my phone's hard drive for, you know, a hundred years afterwards. Yeah, like, you couldn't record everything. Like, I remember even in, like, 2008, 2009, going out to like uh like I'd, I'd be hanging out with mouth and he would have like a digital camera and i would be uh he'd take photos of us at breakfast to like commemorate the moment like that's that's what photography was like back in <laughs> in 2009 which is only like 10 years ago basically and i would be like don't what are you taking photos for stop taking photos i don't want anybody to know i was hung over at morrison's restaurant that's not a memory i i feel like saving Yeah, it's just a, and again, you know, there's there's positives and negatives to it, but I, I feel like there's, uh, I, f I feel like my collegiate experience has like more in common um, 
with like the 80s or the even the 70s yeah. than like uh, than the 2000s. That's how I feel. I feel like the smartphone changed things. Like, the internet changed things a lot, but the smartphone was like, sent them into the freaking stratosphere. Okay, we don't really care about Acid Baby. That's that's a heavy reroll. Oh, thank you. New cams looking crispy. I appreciate it. It's just one of, look, I don't mind when we talk about, like, serious stuff on the stream, but it's one of those things where I'm like, you know, if you find yourself arguing in the Twitch chat of somebody that's playing Isaac, uh, and you're, you're arguing about, like, real-world issues, then it's like, you know, it's, you gotta kind of consider the avenue. Like, keep it, keeping people honest, for sure, you know, if somebody has, like, a horrible take, but, like, Sometimes, I, I see people that are right in chat, but they're not just content knowing that they're right. They're like, I gotta bait the argument and then prove that I'm right. And I'm like, hey, just, just back it up. So what kind of dumb stuff did you get up to in college? Why well, does like, there's a lot of specific moments. Like, there's puking and stuff like that. I remember, <laughs> I mean, it's, apparently, uh, you don't even need to film them, because I'll just tell you. But, uh, you know, go to, like, a kegger or something, you'd be pay playing flip club, flip, flip cup, and, uh, you know, you just, like, uh, you know, maybe you have a little spit up in one of the cups. But you just put it back on the table because you're so wasted you don't even know what's going on. And then, you know, you're just hoping later that nobody comes over <laughs> and drinks the cup. <laughs> hey, you asked! Yeah, you shouldn't do that. You, you use the word don't. I, I choose to use the word shouldn't. That's, that's what's known as a party foul. Exactly. That's that's what we in the business call a party foul. I think it's a wooden nickel. There's a tinted crate. Where? 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 Let me get out my my spyglass. Right where you're standing. Oh, okay, I see one here. I see one here. That is not a party foul. Oh, and the, I, I see. Yeah, yeah, there's one right there, too. Look at that. Ooh! <laughs> new music, too. Oh, whatever. What, what else is new? Has he died? Yeah. Uh, a few times. <laughs> Unfortunately. F. I voted death. I see what you're doing there. The amount of times I've seen someone drink from a puke cup is disgusting. Okay, I don't know. I mean, I, if I, I hope that the amount of times you've seen it is once. And that's still a cause to be disgusted. But the fact that you say it like it's happened a lot scares me about the, the places you find yourself. You know in the Dr. Seuss uh, book, Oh, the Places You'll Go? I don't think you're supposed to go to go back to a place after, the, after you've seen the puke cup used multiple times. Yeah, you know, if that's if that's a change that, you know, the, the younger generation is making, less puke cups, I think that that's, that's a positive for everybody. Dude, that's... Okay, we might win this run. We might win this run. I mean, there's all sorts of gross stuff we got up to in college, man. Like, we used to play this... Yeah, it's... Thinking back on it, I'm like, man... Like, I was not the smartest person I knew. Some of the other people we partied with should have, like, they're smarter than me, and they should have been like, why are we doing this? Like, this is, this is, this is just dirty. Duke Leisure, thank you again. 
Like, there used to be, uh, well, I mean, there's, I'm sure there still is. There's a, this game, we call this Sink It or Drink It, where you get, like, a carafe, and you fill it almost to the top with beer, and then you put, like, a little glass in it, and you put a little beer in the glass. And everybody takes turns going around in a circle and pouring a little bit into the glass, and when it fills up too much, it sinks to the bottom, right? If it sinks to the bottom, you reach your unwashed hand into the carafe and pull out the and then the other thing is everybody's drinking from different some people weren't even drinking beer some people were just having you know like a mixed drink or or like you know fireball out of the bottle or something like that and people were going like bonk and they're all putting their lips on it and they go bonk and then they're reaching their hand into the drink to pull it out and then drinking it like it's it's crazy it's, it's insanity. It's no surprise that you know, it's uh, that we ended up, you know, creating a super bug. No kidding, man. It's nasty. Yeah, can you imagine somebody growing up, like maybe they're like 14 right now, and you ask them to play that game in college? They're gonna be like, "Are you insane?" <laughs> I lived through a pandemic. <laughs> Like at the time, we didn't even think about it. We we were like, oh, you know, oh, this is fun. Anyway, yeah. So I'm l <laughs> lamenting the loss of that that incredible golden era. Oh man, those uh, <laughs> kids these days will never have that experience of you know. Coming down with some kind of, uh, you know, infectious disease once every three weeks or so and being like, I, no, I wonder how I got sick. Oh, it was probably that person that, like, coughed near me. <laughs> it was, couldn't, couldn't possibly be my lifestyle. Yeah, it's probably, oh man, somebody near me sneezed. Yeah, it was probably that Taco Bell I had. Anyway, I know I probably talked about this. I don't know. The time travels so fast for me right now, especially the new streaming schedule. Like days, just every day feels like like a year, not in a bad way, but just like people are like, you already talked about this yesterday, and I'm like, I don't think that's true, but in reality, they're they're absolutely right. Um, but uh, I think that the the pandemic is gonna. It's gonna have some lasting effects on like the way people interact in real life. And for the love of God, if we could just make it standardized that like if for some reason you absolutely and I, I don't think you should have to go out to begin with, but if for some reason you absolutely have to go out while you're suffering from the symptoms of even like a cold or the flu, I hope we're gonna be still wearing masks just at that point. You know, for at least the person who's ill. I can't, it's, it actually feels like an alternate world that we used to just be like, you know, people would be sick, but they'd be like, ah, oh, whatever, I gotta get on the train, and then they would, you'd just be sitting next to somebody going like, uh, like constantly, like, I can't believe we used to, we used to live like animals, man. And we knew germs were, like, a real thing. It wasn't, like, in the, you know, renaissance where we thought it was, oh, you've had, you got too much yellow bile. Or something like that. We were like, yeah, germs are, like, <laughs> that's what causes illness. But at the same time, oh, well, you know, those employees aren't going to manage themselves. It's, it's crazy, man. I, I think I talked about it in an Isaac episode, but it was, like, you know, it... And, and, you know, again, I was younger then, but in, uh, when I, when I was in Korea, like, when the kids were sick, they would still come to school, because, you know, I mean, you're paying for it, um, oh, I worked at a private school, which is much less glamorous than it sounds, by the way, um, but the kids would come to school, and they'd be wearing a mask, and we would, like, almost laugh about it, we'd be like, oh, that's, uh, what a, what a quirky culture. What a quirky culture. When they're sick, they try to protect other people from their illness. <laughs> Whoa, weird. <laughs> What's up with that? What do you do in North America? I don't know, we just send it. Don't be silly, I'm just gonna send it, man.
just built different. I remember listening. Dan, are you here? I remember I was listening to like a... This is like a year and a half ago at this point. I was listening to a Gary Vaynerchuk podcast. He's like a he's like a business guy, but also like a self help guy. And I remember he was he was going off on a rant. He's like, I think we're not good to our immune systems because we wash our hands too much. I I I haven't washed my hands even when I'm at the airport. I haven't washed my hands in like ten years. And then I've never been sick. It's crazy. I've never been sick. I think your body just knows. I think. I think if you don't wash your hands, your body gets stronger to compensate for it. And then COVID. Uh, took off, and I was like, I wonder, <laughs> wonder how you feel about that now. <laughs> I wonder how you feel about uh, how washing your hands now. Anyway, no, I don't think he, this was pre-COVID that he had to take. I'm not trying to make it seem like he's denying the existence of the illness. But you know, I think everybody knew people that were like that. You know, before before COVID too. I was like, you know, oh, I don't wash my hands, and I never get sick. Really? What's your secret? I don't know. Just hope. Just hope for the best. It's crazy, man. I know I've, I, I'm knocking on wood here, but like, I uh, I haven't been sick. The last time I was sick was July 2019. You know why I haven't been sick? Because I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving the house. When I leave the house, people are staying distant and they're wearing masks. I've been treating myself much worse. I've been getting less sleep. Uh, my diet's been a lot worse, especially since the baby. I'm treating myself like a garbage dump, but I'm, from an immune system standpoint, I've never felt better. <laughs> yeah, I, I am... Uh, I am... Con well, no, let's not call it concerned. I guess I'm like, I'm accepting uh, the fact that once uh, our, our daughter's in like, you know, mingling activities, that, it, that those days are gonna end. Like, Dan, is this is it what it's like for you? Like, do you just accept that you kind of, like... I remember when I went to school, you would kind of, like, get sick once a month or something like that. And then maybe you would, uh... But you're a kid, you know, so you're built different. Sometimes you get over it in, like, six hours, you know? You, like, wake up the next day and you're like, oh, I feel great. That's not what it's like when you get sick as an adult. Like, as a kid, sometimes... I mean, I, I liked going to school. This, this... Oh, we'll definitely take that. There's money on the line here. This might not be everybody's experience, but like, you know, you would get a little, you'd start to feel the symptoms when you came home from school, and then my mom would be like, are you gonna, uh, do you wanna go to school tomorrow? And I'd be like, oh, let's just play it by ear. Let's see how I am in the morning. And sometimes in the morning, I would be like, I run through a brick wall. Now as an adult, when you feel the symptoms of starting to get sick, you're usually like, oh no. <laughs> you're like, that's gonna be like, uh, you know, at least a week of my life is going to be a little bit compromised. Possibly much more. You, when you go down, you don't go down because you got kids to take care of. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear that, right? Like, what, what do you, It's not like you can just spend the day in bed, you know? Little Billy's got a uh, tennis license, but he can't overhand serve yet. Time to get out on the hard court. I remember the, so many good memories about being a kid. And, uh, you know, again, I, I love my parents. Every kid causes some kind of degree of strife for their parents. I think I was actually... Um, by, by most accounts, I think I was a pretty low-maintenance kind of child, but I remember my mom, like, a week before, she told me we were gonna play some tennis next week. And then, uh... When the day came around, she was like, can we possibly push, like, our tennis? I know I said we would play, but I have, like, really, really bad cramps. And I was like... I mean, <laughs> like, I guess, fine, but you really, you, what gives my, I don't remember exactly what I said, but, I, you know, I was like, you know, I thought you told me to, like, respect people who were true to their word, or something like that. Yeah, I think, I think when you have a kid, like, all the, all the guilty memories come back to you. This isn't my story, but it's kind of similar. I had a friend in, uh, 
It's the same uh, friend, and uh, I've, I've told this story with Mouth before, where like he didn't show his work on a math test, and then the teacher gave him like a horrible grade, even though his answers were all correct. Which again, I think is a bad move for the teacher. You could just give them the grade they deserve, and then say show your work next time, or and I'm not, or I'm not gonna be so lenient or whatever. But you, you know, I understand you got a curriculum, you got to teach to as well, but like. That kind of zero tolerance is is just like ridiculous. Yeah, you got it right, but you didn't do it my way. So, um, but uh, so so after that, he got in an argument with that teacher for hours, which again is horrible form for the teacher. Like in a class of thirty people, was like you know, he was arguing openly with the teacher in front of the class, and then the teacher instead of being like just cool off, was like in engaging in the argument. It was really bad. Anyway. And then, <laughs> my favorite part is that he, the, the kid was crying. And, uh, uh, the teacher was like, okay, I, he took the whole class out into the hallway. Instead of telling the kid to just go into the hallway, he took all, like, other, uh, the other 27 kids out into the hallway and gave us a lesson. <laughs> in the hallway about how to use a, like a miter box, which is one of those, like, it's a box you can saw wood in. <laughs> it's, anyway, that's not even the story, but you kind of get a vibe for what the kid is like as well. He's very, you know, combative, but, you know, not necessarily in the wrong. But in, in eighth grade, our teacher told us, like, hey, on Friday, we're going to play Mind Trap, which is like basically a book of flashcards where they're, they're all riddles. It would be like, you know, somebody's in a room with three light bulbs and you can only flip one switch. Like, how can you find out which light bulb is connected to everything else or, or to, to which uh, switch? And, you know, it's like, oh, because you, you flip one on and then or you flip two on and then turn one off after 10 minutes and then feel which one's off which one's on which one's hot or something like that anyway so it was like basically riddles for the class that we would play and then on friday we got like way behind schedule for some reason and the teacher was like hey just so you know like we, we can't play mind trap today and he freaking went off dude he was like I remember at, at one point, he, like, the teacher was like, like, we'll play like next week, why are you so upset? And he was like, it's because my parents told me don't respect liars. Like, even, even in seventh grade, we were like, ooh, uh, <laughs> they shouldn't have said that. And our teacher was really nice that year, actually. He shouldn't have said that one. She couldn't respect liars. Probably, and the reason we were probably too slow that day anyway to play Mind Trap, I'm, I'm guaranteeing it. Oh, this boss is really cool, by the way. Um, and I, that wasn't sarcasm. But is, you know, probably because we were cutting up in class too much, so she couldn't teach what she had to teach in time. Cute boss. Cute boss. All right. We're still living. This, this run has potential. It'd be nice if I could stop getting hit by everything. Cutting up? You, you don't know cutting up? Maybe they don't say that anymore. Cutting up is like misbehaving. You know, like, oh, you're specifically talking. Like, oh, you're cutting up. Nope. I will not. I already spent... <laughs> already dropped the, the price of, uh... You know, uh, two Xbox Pro controllers on this thing. Are you kidding me? I'm no, I'm not doing it. I refuse. I actually don't know. Maybe it's one Pro controller. I don't know how much the Pro controllers cost. Go for a reroll. Doesn't matter. They're sold out. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. Anyway, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how that's, oh, that story came about, yeah. Because, dude, I, I hear you, like, uh, we were talking about how you, you can't, like, take a day off necessarily if you get sick but you got kids. That's, I hear you. Even some days, again, like, I just woke up, I had some really spicy food for dinner. I, like, desperately want to use the bathroom. But, like, if I leave the baby's sight for more than 30 seconds, she just erupts in tears. And you're, you're just, it's such an absurd scene. 
but you're literally just going like like begging the baby. You're like, please, please, I have diarrhea. Can, you're you're bargaining. Like, can I just use? I just need to use the bathroom for like two minutes. And then you move away, and she's like, Bleh! I've thought about that. Yeah, you can take the baby into the bathroom, but I don't want to. I don't want to expose my baby to those kind of aromas. I think it's much better to just let her cry than, <laughs> than let's see what this does. Molten penny. She does it to you. It's true, but let me let me tell you something you may not be aware of. Baby poop is gross, but it it doesn't really stink that much. It doesn't stink like adult poop until they start to eat solids, apparently. But when when they uh, when they're only eating milk. The heck is this? A little shrimp? Fortune worm. Alright. Hey, look at that. We got some, some luck out of it. My friend said it smells like popcorn, but gross. You know what? That's not like a... That's not a bad way to describe it. Like, I have... I've, I've heard some people say, like, it smells sweet. And I'm like, you're a freaking sociopath. You, you gotta see a psychologist. <laughs> Something's wrong with you. It definitely does not smell sweet, but it does it doesn't necessarily smell horrible. It's just like it's a little bad. What does mine say? Sweet. You know what? Fine, I'll take the zodiac. What does mine say? Dude. Yeah, you know what? It's not a bad uh it, it, I don't disagree with the person who said it smells like uh, those Jelly Belly butter popcorn jelly beans, but like they've gone bad. It smells like a, a little bit like like slightly bad Jelly Belly butter popcorn jelly beans. Wait, we're getting fortunes when we get hit? That seemed... It, okay, I choose to remove this from my inventory forever. Get out of here. <laughs> what are you talking? People are like, please end this bit. The, the bit is something smells bad that you're not even smelling. Please stop. Acknowledging the existence of things that smell bad is too much for me right now. It's just, it's been a long year, okay? Telling me things smell bad. It's too much. You ruined popcorn for me? So what does the movie theaters aren't even open, dude? Next time you go, just go get some raisinets, okay? I'm eating jelly bellies, right? Okay, I'll... That one I'll allow. I was looking around because I still got those uh, bean boozles around here. <laughs> Every once in a while when I get extremely peckish, I find myself being like, you know what, maybe it's worth it to take a little gamble on the Bean Boozled. Even though, like, if they're... the, the risk-reward is so bad. Like, if they're good, okay, I got to eat a jelly bean. Big whoop. If they're bad, it's like eating human vomit. Okay, we'll take the spirit heart. This is like desperation, but what's your what's your movie theater candy if you get one? So I haven't gotten movie theater candy in a, I haven't eaten movie theater candy in a, in a long time. We would always get it when we go to the theater just because like to get the popcorn deal, you get candy along with it. But you only you can only take a candy off the top uh, off the top two rows. The bottom row, those are the blue chips. You gotta. Those are just there to to be aspirational for you. You know what? Let's let's get insanely weird, okay? Let's let's do it. I don't mind this. So we, you, we'll always get like Skittles, but then we usually don't eat them. We'll just bring them home, and then like I'll lose self control later and eat like a third of the bag, and then throw the rest in the garbage so I don't eat the rest. Um, but I was thinking back like. As a kid, how many sour Skittles did you eat past the point of, like, even enjoying sour Skittles? You know what I mean? 
Like, by the third sour Skittle, your tongue is bleeding. But you're still like, I'm gonna keep eating them. Like, I think they're actually a health hazard. Regular Skittles, I love them. Sour Skittles actually, like, tear the skin on your tongue up. It's like a combination of the sour uh, sugar and also the texture of the sour sugar. I honestly think, I don't, I don't think, if you offered me a sour Skittle, I don't even think I would take one now. Yeah, incredible. I, I, I don't think I would take one. One is not enough to harm you, but I think I would just be like, I don't, I don't want it. It's just, it's too dangerous. They were tasty though. I miss the old NL who would eat sour Skittles. <laughs> I don't mind sour stuff. Like occasionally I'll buy smart sweets. There's some there's some decent like smart sweet sour candy. What do you think's going on there? Oh yeah, the same the same thing with pineapple. Absolutely. It is wild. I agree. It, it's I think it's extremely cool that you can like as a kid you could just screw up your teeth, and it's you get a do-over once you hit like your teenage years. <laughs> I wish, I, cause dude, and I I apologize if this is bringing up bad memories for anybody, but like, don't you wish like other parts of your body were like that? Don't you wish eyeballs were like that? So if you like lost an eyeball when you were a kid or something like that, you'd be like, oh, don't worry. When you turn like 14, your adult eyeballs are gonna come in. At least you then you'd be like, I'll be careful with this set. I guess okay it would be pretty dramatic if your if your eyeball fell out. You get you got me there. You got me there. But yeah, Dave, you got a fresh set of 2020 vision eyeballs. By the way, we're playing we're playing what are we printing here today? Oh my god, this, this is a massive document. Just give it a sec. Okay, it's it's over. It's over. What are we printing here? What are we printing? Oh, baby, it's tax forms for our county. <laughs> Ooh la la. Let me see what we got going on here. Good lord. Well. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. That's that's one of those. I always remember what Dan said when I I used to tell him how stressed out about taxes I would get, and he's like, "Don't you just drop off like a bunch of documents at your at, at their office and say send it?" And honestly, e ever since he told me that, I think it actually has made my life easier because like instead of, I mean, I'm I'm getting more organized over time. Like this this is the most organized I've ever been for taxes for sure, but. Um, now, I just, uh, I, I remember Dan saying that, and sometimes I just send an email that's like, Hey, sorry, here's just like a list, here's like a bunch of JPEGs. <laughs> like, figure it out. And then, you know, I laugh, because I go like, ah, I got them. And then they send me the, uh, the bill later, and the billable hours are like, you know, 50% higher than they were last year, and I'm like, all right. But you know what? It kind of it comes, it works out in the end, like on a on an emotional level. I'm like, it's it's kind of worth it. Anybody else's HelloFresh come with a Monopoly game this week? What? No. <laughs> what the heck? Mine just came with a bunch of food, like normal. There, I have had some occasional um, good eats on uh, HelloFresh. I got free Nando's hot sauce once, and I think we got a bunch of coupons for like free Starbucks cold brew, which was pretty sweet. But then like the rest of the time, just every week they throw in like six coupons that are like free box and you're like, oh snap, free box. And then it's like if you're setting up a new account. And I'm like, well, there's where you got your 
You, you, your marketing information's all on. I got the box because I have an account, so... I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I guess I'm supposed to do your marketing for you and go, go give out these free trials to friends and family. So I just put them in the recycling. Monopoly Bid, a board game that you can play, a card game you can play with two to five players. That sounds sick! I did see, because crypto's running wild again, a bunch of like new sites have popped up that are that are selling cryptocurrency. And I every single one, I will never do it. You you I mean I shouldn't say you have my word. In all likelihood, I will never do it. Um but Every single one, I at least look at the referral program and I start doing math in my head. So the one that I was looking at, it was like, hey, for everybody that you refer that spends uh, $100, you, we'll give you $10. And then I was like, I have another question. Is the $10 limited to uh, 25 people or something? Or does it go on forever? And it said, uh, it goes on into perpetuity. And then I just started in my head, I was like, you know. That's where I want to go. <laughs> Way down to Coco, Bermuda, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to purchase some Ethereum, Bitcoin, Uniswap, Cardano. Bit, bit nine ants. I don't know what they're called. Anyway. Just tweet it for free money. No, because, like, you know, you gotta be... Certain... Yeah, people can handle themselves, but there's also some people who, you know, if you were like, Hey, if you sign up for this, I get ten bucks. They'll sign up for it and then, like, <laughs> buy, <laughs> you know, their life savings and cryptocurrency at all-time highs and then harbor resentment, like, forever. Why, why would you use your orbital there? That, that's just sloppy play. Go negative? Okay, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> Why wouldn't you use chariot? Great, great question. Great question as well. Great question. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's, it's just too much enemy. Like, dude, I don't know. So, like, I, the finance YouTube is very weird to me. Because there's a bunch of, like, old people making what I consider to be really good videos. But for the most part, the videos are, like, legitimately... Like the same, I hate what I'm looking at here, just for the record, but the videos are like the same eight things over and over. It's basically like, you know, do your research on the stock, and if it looks undervalued, then, you know, do some more research, and then buy in if it looks good. And then wait forever. Um, and the videos get like, you know, 10,000 views per video. Seems sensible to me. And then there's people that are like, they're like, 18 years old and one day and their video is like This stock will go 10x today and it's like a Chinese drone company or something like that And then you always like look at the stock like two days later and it went down 66% and you're like Why does this video have 200,000 views in a, in a week? That's crazy Yeah, and I, for people that don't know well, here's here's my thoughts and and like, I'm sure there's a counter examples here, but if you're ever watching like an investing uh, YouTuber and they're like, this is going 10x, this is going 20x, you got to buy in right now. Just, re just remember the words of me. Any YouTuber who could 10x their money would stop making YouTube videos within six months. They'd be, they'd retire. It's, it's, it's a universal truth. You really think they would, they would keep pumping out a video per day to make, I don't know, what like piddly little ad revenue when instead they like they have they could go 10x on their money with every stock? It doesn't pass the smell test. Anyway. Or they might make videos. They wouldn't make videos about investing. They would make videos about like uh, you know, hey, check out this cool CSGO uh, themed yacht I just bought or something. Um yeah, plus, if something's going to go 10x, they're not going to tell you about it. They're Instead, they're going to uh, keep it a secret as long as possible so they can load up the freaking truck.
Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, but yeah, then there's also, like, a, a, if you don't watch, like, finance videos on YouTube, I totally understand, because it's kind of boring. But there are a ton of channels out there that literally, like, I, they're almost like DJs. They just remix the same 10 to 20 interviews with Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and Peter Lynch. And then, like, splice up the video into, and they're like, T check out the... Peter Lynch has got some news for you, like, in the interviews from Charlie Rose in, like, the year two, or not even 2000, like, 1996, and he's like, you know, he, he gives advice, and I'm like, this channel's got, it's got, like, 200,000 subscribers, you just, you're just taking Warren Buffett's, like, you know, shareholder meeting and being like, check it out, this is what Warren Buffett said, you can just do that? It's the stock YouTube is crazy. It's 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 the wild west for sure. I'm learning more because like there were years where I didn't uh, watch any YouTube because it reminded me too much of like my own job, and I would see like twelve year old kids making Minecraft videos that got like ten times more views than my channel has in its entire life, and I'd be like, I don't know, it, it was just like too real for me. But now that I'm watching a little bit more YouTube, I'm, I'm learning a lot about how the platform has changed <laughs> over the years, for sure. I mean, good good channels, I mean, and people might disagree with, and, I, and I'm open to the hearing this, by the way, but there, there's like uh, a few channels that I watch for investing stuff, but you always have to keep a, you know, it, keep it in mind. That, you know, they're human beings as well. Like, you you, you really should learn to do your own research. That way, if, if you watch somebody, even if they're trying to give you good advice, you can at least do your own research and be like, uh, you know, I actually disagree with their investment thesis or whatever. Thank you for reminding me, by the way. We will, we will attempt to go down to the, uh, whatever the third floor is called, Shoal. Yeah, I'll take Holy Mantle. That's a big one. Um... So, like, I, I would really recommend, like, like books to begin with. Like, Peter Lynch's uh, uh, One Up on Wall Street is a really good one. So, you know what's funny? Funky, Funky Kong's Jorts. <laughs> Funky Kong on Twitter uh, recommended this book to me called Rule One Investing by, by a, a, an investor named Phil Town. And then from reading that, which I think is a great book, uh, I also found Phil Town's YouTube channel, and, and I think he's got good advice going on there, even though, I mean, I don't agree with him on 100% of things, but, I mean, he is the expert, don't get me wrong. Um, no, not Rule 34. That's that's two different things. Then on YouTube, so I, I, on YouTube, I like Phil Town, and I like um, Sven Carlin, and you can just search for their names if you want. Um, and, I, and I like, uh, there's a dividend investor named PPC Ian, who is kind of like, uh, he's a cool, uncool dad. <laughs> I'm just going to blow myself up, I suppose. Anyway, so th that's, uh, that's when I watch stuff. But I, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, again, I'm speaking from an, an amateur standpoint. But, but those are channels that I, I've watched a little bit. And I'm like, you know what, I think they got some, they got some good stuff. To, to my amateur mind, they, they, they tell me what I want to hear. Because what I want to hear is not, like, this stock is going 10x. What I want to hear is, like, it's hard work. Who's got the bad stuff? Literally just search, like, investing. And then look at... I mean, if, if their thumbnails look like my thumbnails, don't trust them. Any, any, I, I haven't fought this boss in a hundred years. If their thumbnail has them going like this, I would be very concerned. If, if in their thumbnail they're wearing a suit and they look like they've never touched a computer, that's the person you want to be watching. Alright, what are your attacks? What do you do? Apparently, like, it's still, the, the, the muscle memory is, like, still locked in my brain here. Then, like, some things come down from the ceiling. He, he, he do be stompy. Why am I so red, dude? Why am I so red?
I forgot that he summons uh, jerk flies. Oh, they got out of sync, man. Look at that. Okay. Moving on. New boss. New boss. Anyway, that's I, I apologize for the investing talk. But we also got some very embarrassing, like, poop talk. So, you know, you, you take the good with the bad. I don't mind question marks. I can live with that. I'm gonna be beat red for my family photo tonight. Has there been anything... Uh, people are talking about that new show on Netflix, right? Behind Her Eyes. Is that worth watching? I haven't seen... Um... Oh, yes. I will. I haven't seen anything on Netflix since, since The Queen's Gambit. It's horny? Okay, that's not really what I asked. Okay, we gotta hit him with the fountain. I do like the documentaries about murder. I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend that I don't. Good damage, good damage. Oh, son of a... <laughs> Auntie Donna's really good. I en I enjoyed Auntie Donna. I feel bad because I, I um, tweeted Mark from Auntie Donna. And I was like, let's play Fall Guys. And then he was like, okay. And then I like have not opened Fall Guys, I think, since I made... What the heck? What the heck? Since I made the tweet. I'm, I'm going down, lads. Yo, I know it's the dark room, but did it have to be so literal? I literally can't see. We we can't. We can't. That's <laughs> come on. That's too much. That's too much. It's simply too much. What's happening, man? Spirit heart! There's a spirit heart. There's a spear. I can't get to the spirit heart. Can't get to it. Can't fly, dummy. Why? Thank you. Thank you, old bandage or whatever it was. Fanny pack, maybe? I'm not sure. Oh, that's a big hit. That's a big hit. Dude, what's up with this freaking teleporting? Is this what the dark room is like? Every room is a curse? How did we not die? How are we not dead? Oh! <laughs> I was just trying to pick up the half red heart. I was just trying to pick up the half red heart, man. It's all right. Complete purchase. We got one more run in us, I think. We got one more run in us. It's a hard game, man. It's a hard game. Not an easy game. Thanks for the subs, me. 